All right. We also started to talk last week but got interrupted about our topic of refinance by divorce. Unfortunately, a lot of people in our country get divorced, and um, and that forces typically – if they happen to own a home, one of the parties, in many, many cases, ends up wanting to keep the former marital property, mm -hmm. but they need to, by court order, get the other departing ex-spouse mm -hmm. off the mortgage loan. And there's only one way to do that, and that is to refinance. Okay. David, do you have, happen to have handy? Because I know you do. I do. Number of people that get divorced in America per year. 800,000, give or take. Oh, but don't worry. Not so about 2.1 2 million per year are getting married. So we have a net positive. Oh, yeah. More people are getting married than are getting divorced. Right. Okay, so that's good. And in Wisconsin, did you come up with a number? For I came Wisconsin? up. It was about uh, 2.7 out of every 1,000 people. So there's about uh, 6 million people who no, live in the state of population. Wisconsin. I don't think it's that big. All right, I'll All come right. back to you. We'll come back to you. He'll get back to us on that. Okay, so again, to recap, this happens quite frequently, and you have three periods of time, Eric, when you could divorce. One is before the divorce starts. Let's call that the preemptive strike. Okay. Hey, you know that the marriage is kind of rocky, and you're probably headed to divorce court. Well, you can refinance before you file, because a mortgage lender can only ask you, Eric, what is your marital status? Are you married, separated, or divorced? So in this case, you would just say separated? No, or you yeah, just... yeah. You, well, let me back up. The three, I made a big mistake. Uh -huh. The three categories are married, separated, or unmarried. Yes. If you have filed for divorce, then you have to say separated. And, you know, people are honest, so they'll usually say, well, I just filed for divorce. Yep. Okay, well, that puts you in the separated category. Mm -hmm. And when you're in that separated category, until you reach the point during your divorce that you have a written agreement between the spouses that says, here's how much one party is going to pay the other in separate maintenance and child support if there are children. Until you get that written agreement, you're poison. No lender wants to help you because we can't figure out what your monthly debts are going to be. Mm -hmm. And that is a huge part in underwriting and approving loans. So if you take care of the refinance before you file, mm -hmm. that's fine because you would report correctly that you're still married, you're not separated because you haven't filed, and you're not unmarried yet. And so that works because we can remove one of the spouses from the mortgage. Now, after you get divorced, if, if you happen to do the refinance before you file, once you're done with the divorce, you will still have to, at that point, remove the departing spouse from title using a quick claim deed. Okay? So then the, the during divorce, you're poisoned until such time as you have the marital property separate settlement agreement. And then, of course, there's after divorce because now we have a legal document that spells every, everything out. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of the particular pitfalls and problems, though, that do occur in the after divorce stage when we come back. You are listening to the Academic Mortgage and Realty Show on 620 WTMJ. If you have a question or comment, or maybe you're getting divorced, you can call 414-799-1620 or throughout the Midwest on the Academic Mortgage toll-free line at 1-800-877-1620 and have a question for Brian and or David. It's 1015. Home buying advice from the guys who know it best. This is the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickert on 620 WTMJ. The Republicans have wrapped up in Cleveland. Now it's the Democrats' turn in the spotlight. The Democratic National Convention kicks off in Philadelphia tomorrow. Get a preview of night one on Wisconsin's Afternoon News. That is at 321 tomorrow. You are listening to the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show on 620 WTMJ. I'm Eric Bilstead along with Brian Wickert and David Wickert. So uh, we're talking about uh, divorce, and uh, to defend myself in the research department, we had noted that there's about 5.76 million people who live in the state of Wisconsin. 2.7 out of every 1,000 in Wisconsin get divorced, so the quick math is about 15,000 people in Wisconsin get divorced every year, and that was corroborated just now by our other half of the research department, according right. to the... Uh, Wisconsin Human Health and Human Services Department. Yeah, that's the, uh, by the way, on a national level, who keeps track of divorce? The Center data? of Disease Control. Yeah, Center for Disease Center. Control. And in Wisconsin, it's the Department of Health Services. 
Um, so when we're talking about, okay, so now let's say you're in the after-divorce department. Yep. And somebody has to pay alimony or separate maintenance and or child support. Okay. That becomes a monthly debt. Like a car payment. Like a car payment. And so I have a case going on right now where there's a conflict between the actual divorce decree and what the guy is actually paying. So he's over the maximum debt-to-income ratio. It's kind of a confluence of a perfect storm. His employer is large and will not verify the guy's overtime income. So I can't use his overtime income. Mm. Then his divorce decree says one number. Let's say it's 1800 but he's really only paying 1500 However, at the $1,800 monthly maintenance and child support, he doesn't qualify mm -hmm. for this purchases of what actually he's trying to do. So we, I think we're going to get that straightened out by digging down and getting the right number for the maintenance. But the point is, um, it counts as a car payment. I had a case earlier this year where I was consulting with the person before divorce, and we were kind of estimating if he did, in fact, go through with the divorce, which he hadn't filed yet, is that the income ratio would be such that he definitely would not qualify okay. based on the amount of maintenance that he would have to pay. So we did one of those preemptive uh, cases, and in this case, he was actually going to buy another property. Well, it's complicated. But the point is, we got the financing done before he filed, and everything turned out fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, the other thing, though, that's true is let's say that you're on the receiving end of alimony or child support, and let's say that you want to use that income to stay in the former marital home. The most right. common instance is the wife and kids stay in the family home. The husband leaves the household. Now the ex-wife is going to be receiving maintenance and child support. Mm -hmm. Hey, okay, now I'm going to refinance and get my ex-husband off the uh, off the home. But what's the problem, Dave? Well, there has to be a track record of receiving those payments. How long? Six months. That's right. Yeah. So you can't just do that the month after divorce if there has not been a track record. A track record. So, But in a lot of cases, and this is just a heads up, hey, start making that monthly payment. Well, the other thing on child support is there has to be a continuation. Correct. It can't just be like, I'm going to get child support for the next three months before our kid turns 18. I, I had a case that on a loan for a purchase that closed this month where the borrower had a 15-year-old. And so we, that kid was going to turn 18 within the three-year window, so we couldn't use that child support payment for that particular child. Yeah. yeah. So it's complicated, but you need an expert uh, staff like Acunet. Unfortunately or fortunately, we have a lot of experience dealing with divorces. So if you're in the process of divorce or know somebody who is, give us a call. We know what we're doing at Acunet Mortgage.